Hey, how's it going everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast and in today's video we'll recap the 45-17 loss at home by the Red Raiders to the Baylor Bears on the night that arguably the greatest Red Raider in the NFL got enshrined into the ring of honor Texas Tech unfortunately laid an egg and a lot of it had to do with the offense. We'll talk about the offense in general. We'll also talk about the defense in this one who I actually thought played pretty well, but considering the circumstances, you can't tell by the score of the game. And then we'll also break down Texas Tech soccer, who lost in a heartbreaking fashion in the Big 12 tournament to end their 2022 campaign. But let's jump into this one as, again, 45-17 and a night where everything was laid out for success for Texas Tech in terms of the... I guess the agenda and everything that was being pushed forward, right? You think about it. A night game on Halloween, weird things happen in Lubbock. You've got Patrick Mahomes going into the Texas Tech Hall of Fame, as well as the Ring of Honor, and the storylines around Joey McGuire and his time at Baylor, as well as countless guys in terms of both sides of the sidelines um, and their connections to the other schools. But just looking at the box score, right? Total yards, Texas Tech had 300 total yards in this one today, their lowest total of the season. You look at what they did in the passing game, 159 yards passing, 12 completions in this one. We'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, rushing the football wasn't too bad. You averaged about four yards a carry. It's too bad you got into the running game a little late because it was non-existent, it felt like, for the about, oh, the first 20 minutes of this game. Um Obviously, the main takeaway in this one, no pun intended, was the takeaways, where Texas Tech lost the turnover battle 5-1. to one. Texas Tech had all three quarterbacks play in this one for at least a little bit of time, and all of them threw an interception. Of course, I'm talking about Baron Morton, Tyler Shuck, and Donovan Smith. Donovan Smith was 0-2 in this one in terms of passing the football and had an interception. Tyler Shuck was 1-2. for two. Technically, I guess he completed both of his passes, but one was just to the other team. And then Baron Morton had three interceptions. And now this is where I kind of want to start because I think a lot of people on the Twitter spaces I had, and by the way, follow me on Twitter at RCMB323. The link to it is in the description. Um, a lot of people on my post-game Twitter spaces where, oh, I think we capped out at around 250 people in there at one point. Um, you know, you, you look at what went wrong for Texas Tech, and yeah, it's easy to blame the quarterbacks in this one. I, I can't do it. I can't do it. And, and the reason being is, Look at how bad the offensive line performed in this one. Look at how bad it was, okay? Six sacks, eight QB hurries, eight tackles for loss. Excuse me, three QB hurries, eight tackles for loss, okay? I, I was bewildered at how different Texas Tech looked on the offensive line from one week to the next. Um, and yeah, there's a jump up in competition, but some people would say there isn't. Baylor lost to West Virginia. They lost to West Virginia. And then you come in against Baylor and after a dominating performance on the offensive line, remember 48 to 10 just a week ago, and your offensive line looks lost from the get go. Um, and now does Baylor have some off or defensive line talent? Absolutely they do. But you laid an egg offensively when it comes to your offensive line and in the trenches. I thought it was abysmal from the get-go. And the fact that you just decided not to run the football at all when you saw the offensive line struggling from the jump, it took a little while. Like, yeah, you look at the stats, Tech did run the football, but it took them a while to get there. If you watch this game, it felt like Tech didn't run the football for the first 20 minutes. And by that time, you look at the time of possession in this one. Baylor held the ball offensively for two-thirds of the entire game. Let me repeat that. Two-thirds of the entire game, over 40 minutes, okay? Your offense was not good at sustaining drives in this one, and it put your defense, which I thought actually played pretty damn well, all things considered, in a terrible place. What do you expect the defense to do when they're on the field for 40 minutes and your offense has five turnovers? What do you expect them to do? Like, wh what? what? What do you want them to do? 
right? There's not much you can do when you don't have as many bodies as you want in terms of turning it over, in terms of getting guys in there depth-wise, and Baylor is just running it down your throat, right? But the crazy part is, is when you look at this, Baylor and their team stats, they didn't rush the ball all that well. I mean, Tech actually ran the ball better in terms of yards per carry. Tech ran the ball for 4.1. Baylor ran it for 3.9. The difference is Baylor ran it 59 times. 59 times. Richard Reese was an absolute box office machine for Baylor. 36 carries, 148 yards, and three tutties. I told you before this game, he was a guy that you had to slow down. Him and Blake Chaffin on the play action, and don't even get me started on the D tackle for Baylor in this one, who um, the crazy part is, as you look at it, he's not even in the box score. He did not r record a sack, a tackle for loss, anything in this one. Nothing. But his presence was felt, I can tell you that, because he was getting double teamed, and at some points even triple teamed by the Texas Tech offensive line. That's how much of an impact he was making. So, and of course, I'm talking about Icky on there. I I don't know. On the offensive side of the football, the offensive line is hard not to blame. I'll also say this. The quarterbacks made some bad decisions. I get it. But the wide receivers get no separation. And if you listen to the Back to 12 podcast with Lyle and I weekly, Lyle is adamant about this, that he thinks the wide receivers just don't create separation. And it reared its ugly head and then some um, against Baylor, where it felt like every throw was super, super difficult for Baron Morton and crew uh, in this one. And yeah, they had some bad decisions. Don't get me wrong. Every game, there's going to be bad decisions by the quarterbacks. But even when it was a good decision, it felt like Baylor was right there and it was a tight window to throw in for the quarterbacks. Um, and sometimes they made good throws. Other times they didn't. But overall, this wide receiving core just struggles to create separation and a lot of it for long periods of time. And it's something that you've seen in spurts, but you haven't seen really three things rear its ugly head um, for Texas Tech. Obviously, the offensive line play, the wide receivers not be able to create separation. And and really, this this last one that I really wanted to talk about, it it's one of those deals where... Um, you know, I, I didn't think it was that big of an issue, but when you put it on top of the other two, um, it really does become a problem. But I want to preface this by saying if the first two things that I mentioned don't happen or just one of them don't happen, this third thing isn't a problem. And it's the play calling in the sense of how much you had to change and how predictable you became, right? You have to change your play calling when your offensive line can't block for you in the pass game. It's that simple. You have to adjust your play calling when the wide receivers don't create separation. Now, I wish they would have gone to a little bit more running early on, but I also understand if you think your team can't pass block, what makes you think they can run block, right? So all of this really comes down to the separation of the wide receivers and the offensive line play in terms of the issues on the offense for Texas Tech for me. Again, I don't want to put it just all on them. Right, I thought the play calling was a little bit weird at times, um, specifically just not getting the run game involved early. Also, the quarterbacks had five INCs. It's not ideal, right? Like that That's not what you want, and part of that is their fault, but also part of it is just, hey, you got to tip your cap to Baylor sometimes, and also just, again, offensive line play trying to make something happen, and I get it. We say that, um, but these guys are human, right? They're going to want to make something happen, especially in that kind of environment. Um, I don't know, it's frustrating because you have one of these defenses that you haven't seen in a long time in Lubbock and you look at the box score right now and it's 45-17 and it, they played a lot better than that. They, they truly did. It, if you ask me what the score should have been by how well the defense played, I'll be honest, I think this is like a 25-17 type game, 26-17 type game. But when you give the Baylor offense Five more possessions, technically four, since you created one turnover yourself. Four more possessions because of your turnovers, they're going to score a lot more points. That's just typically how it goes. So, um, you know, it's frustrating. How do you fix this when it comes to this? Obviously, Zach Kitley is a lot smarter than me when it comes to fixing these things. I think you're going to see a lot more screens. But the issue is your bookend tackles were just getting absolutely abused. 
You can't throw a screen if the D end is already in the line of sight of the ball and the ball track um, over there when it comes to either going to the right or the left side. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they adjust this week. Uh, I, I'm very interested to see what Texas Tech does moving forward because you have a chance to go to a bowl game. This week's going to be difficult, obviously, at number seven, TCU. Um, Texas Tech has a chance, but you're going to have to figure a lot of things out, mainly on the offensive line, though, because TCU, they are opportunistic defensively, and they have figured out ways to get to the quarterback with the athletes that they have. Um, and don't get me started on their offense. We know how good a Sunny Dykes offense can be um, out there from his time at, well, really multiple places, whether that was Cal, whether that was SMU, now TCU is the head man as well. So let me know in the comments, what frustrated you the most from this Texas Tech performance um, and their 45-17 loss to Baylor? Again, a hyped up game. You had the storylines from the coaching aspect of it. Obviously, the main one was Patrick Mahomes going into the ring of honor, but unfortunately, Texas Tech lost 45-17. Um, on the gridiron. Now switching gears a little bit. Before I get there though, be sure to subscribe. We are one week away from Texas Tech men's basketball tipping off. Going to have a lot more basketball content. Uh, I'm talking to the guys around the program. They are super excited. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun talking about them on a daily basis right here. And that's exactly what we'll do. We'll talk about Texas Tech men's basketball daily right here on the best Texas Tech YouTube channel. Of course, I'm talking about the Back to 12 podcast channel. But before we get out of here, um, just a heartbreaking defeat for Texas Tech soccer. Um with nine seconds left in their matchup against Oklahoma in the Big 12 tournament in Round Rock, the Red Raiders lost and ended their season. Um, just a heartbreaking loss for Texas Tech soccer. One of the better programs on campus, if we're being honest about it. Um, they finished their season 9-4-6, and 5-1-3 and three in the Big 12. They were the three seed and they tallied 18 points. In conference play, their most since 2019. What, again, one of the better programs on campus. They truly are. Coach Stone has that machine going, as some would say. But unfortunately, not everything goes your way. And I'll say this because I know Coach Stone from covering him and calling those games while I was in college. Um, he's he's a no excuse guy. Yeah, he wants the girls to be disappointed a little bit and allows them to be disappointed. But at the same time, you got to credit the opponent in Oklahoma. And then making a play um, and an opportunistic one at that um, with just a few seconds remaining in the matchup between Oklahoma and Texas Tech on the pitch between, well, the Red Raiders and the Sooners. But unfortunately, their season comes to an end. But it wasn't after a lot of great memories. And this program continues to build. And they'll have a lot of these girls back. And they will continue to be great over at the John Walker Soccer Complex. So again, I am RC Maxfield reminding you one more time. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech Athletics all year long right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.